Is it possible to be drunk without drinking? Well, according to a doctor in Staten Island, not only is it possible, he believes the condition known as auto brewery syndrome is underdiagnosed. Seven on your side, investigative reporter Kristen Thorns. Hello, and welcome to Weird Health News with the EZENWANYI.com. Yes, the Queen Boo. Okay, sit up straight, shoulders back, and let's get started. Auto brewery syndrome is a rare medical condition that causes a person's body to produce alcohol from the food they eat, even if they haven't consumed any alcoholic beverages. In this video, we will discuss the details of auto brewery syndrome, including its signs and symptoms, causes, diagnosis, treatment, outlook, and some examples of people suffering from it. Auto brewery syndrome, also known as gut fermentation syndrome or endogenous ethanol fermentation, occurs when yeast or bacteria in the digestive system converts carbohydrates into alcohol. This process occurs naturally in the body, but in people with auto brewery syndrome, it happens excessively, leading to high levels of alcohol in their blood. The symptoms of auto brewery syndrome can vary from person to person, but they typically include feeling intoxicated without drinking alcohol feeling hungover after eating certain foods, and having a high blood alcohol level even when sober. Other symptoms may include dizziness, fatigue, disorientation, and even blackouts. The exact cause of auto brewery syndrome is unknown, but it is believed to be related to an overgrowth of yeast or bacteria in the gut. This overgrowth can be caused by a variety of factors, including a diet high in carbohydrates, prolonged antibiotic use, and certain medical conditions such as diabetes and obesity. Diagnosing auto brewery syndrome can be challenging because it is a rare condition and its symptoms can mimic other medical conditions. However, a doctor may suspect auto brewery syndrome if a patient consistently shows signs of intoxication without drinking alcohol. A breathalyzer test may also be used to confirm the presence of alcohol in the patient's blood. The treatment of auto brewery syndrome involves a combination of dietary changes and medication. The goal is to reduce the amount of yeast and bacteria in the gut that is responsible for converting carbohydrates into alcohol. A low-carbohydrate, low-sugar diet is recommended, and some patients may also benefit from taking antifungal medications or probiotics. The outlook for people with auto brewery syndrome is generally good if they receive proper treatment. With dietary changes and medication, most patients can reduce their symptoms and prevent the recurrence of the condition. However, if left untreated, auto brewery syndrome can lead to chronic liver disease and other serious health problems. Auto brewery syndrome is a rare medical condition that causes a person's body to produce alcohol from the food they eat. Its symptoms can include feeling intoxicated without drinking alcohol, feeling hungover after eating certain foods, and having a high blood alcohol level even when sober. The exact cause of the condition is unknown, but it is believed to be related to an overgrowth of yeast or bacteria in the gut. The treatment involves a combination of dietary changes and medication, and the outlook for people with auto brewery syndrome is generally good if they receive proper treatment. Take a look at these videos. So here's an interesting question. Is it possible to be drunk without drinking? Well, according to a doctor in Staten Island, not only is it possible, he believes the condition known as auto brewery syndrome is underdiagnosed. Seven on your side, investigative reporter Kristen Thorne spoke with the doctor and several people who have the condition and whose lives were being ruined because of it. In 2006, Mark Mangiardo had it all. He was a teacher and a coach at a high school in New Jersey. I was brought into my athletic director's office. That was the first time that somebody said that they had smelled alcohol on me. Mangiardo says he hadn't been drinking on the job. I would never do that. I'm a teacher. But administrators kept getting complaints that he smelled of alcohol. During the school day, I had a meeting and um, I was I was forced to, to uh, take, a, take a blood test and a breath test and I had alcohol in my system. I had no idea. The father of two lost his job and his teaching license. My mother started researching. You know, she, she actually just Googled, can your body create alcohol? And auto brewery syndrome pop, popped up. 
Autobrewery syndrome, or ABS, is a rare condition in which the body makes alcohol. Patients with the syndrome have high levels of yeast and fungus in their guts. When they eat carbohydrates, their body makes alcohol. Dr. Prasanna Wickremesinghe on Staten Island is one of the few doctors who's been studying the syndrome and treats patients all over the world. I personally have nearly 30 cases now including Manjardo, who now lives in Florida. He also treated Donato Giannato of Old Bridge Township. Giannato died in 2020, but his wife says he suffered with ABS for years. After dinner, he would start slurring his speech, and, and I kept saying to his doctors, I, I don't know, he kind of looks like he's drunk. Dr. Wick Remesingha tested Genato as he does with all his patients in a controlled hospital environment. The patient drinks a sugary liquid and then their blood is tested for alcohol. I've seen them go three times the DWI level in two hours. Ray Lewis of Oregon didn't know he had ABS until he was slapped with drunk driving charges after crashing a tanker he was driving at work. The judge said under the law, Lewis still had to be charged. Being charged with a crime for having a rare medical disease is just bizarre. Dr. Wick Remesingha says he believes antibiotics are a trigger of auto brewery syndrome. He says he uses antifungals to treat ABS and people who have ABS have to pay very close attention to their diets. The doctor is now working on releasing a large study about ABS because he wants to raise awareness within the medical community of the syndrome. Well, you're about to see the video for yourself, a wife recording her own husband who seems drunk. Police at one point even arresting him for a DUI. They thought he was drunk too. But the medical mystery was that he'd hardly had a drink. It was something else. Here's Deborah Roberts. 34-year-old Nick Hess is the classic active guy. He bikes, swims, plays volleyball. His wife Karen can barely keep up. I'm the more serious person. He really keeps things lighthearted. We're almost like complete opposites. <laughs> she, she's the, uh, the order to the chaos over here, I guess. I'm not beat like a hyperactive, fun guy. Even with different personalities and career paths, she's in an office, he's now a waiter, life was good. Is everybody good so far? But then there was something else, something really strange. We would be watching television episode after episode, and by the end of the evening, he would start to be confused and he would start slurring, and he did smell like he had alcohol on his breath. Karen began recording Nick on her phone. I don't feel good. You don't feel good? Yeah. What do you feel like? I feel like, uh, like I'm like on some hard drug or something. Had he been drinking at that point? No, we were, we were together all day. Um, watching television. Have you had anything to drink? Nothing. Not one thing. Why are you recording me? Because I want to show this to the doctors. How intoxicated did he appear at times? It got really bad. She was filming me. I moved her on camera. I slurred and was swerving. I used a lot of profanity. Um, when I looked at it, because I wouldn't believe it, my heart just fell like straight down. Desperate for answers, Nick and Karen took their video to doctor after doctor. There was one doctor that said, I think you have a closet alcoholic on your hands. Even Karen began to wonder if the man she's known for 10 years had a deep secret. I went through the entire house looking, looking for alcohol. In the mattresses, everywhere, in between uh, the towels and the towel rack. Um, anywhere that I think that you could find a small bottle or a small flask. So the painful part was just doubting him. There was no evidence that Nick may have been drinking. Until one night in 2011, when driving just a few blocks from home, Nick says he was hit by an oncoming car. I got through this alley. And right up here is where the accident happened. I picked up my phone and I called the police instantly. But when they arrive, police quickly make Nick the focus of the investigation. Nick, how much you had a drink tonight? Uh, I had one beer. One beer? Yeah. How long ago was it? Um, about 12 hours ago. Slurring and wobbly, police are convinced he's had more than one beer. 
and insist on a breathalyzer. Blow, 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 blow. There you go. Then startling results. 0.236, according to the police report. Nick was nearly three times over the legal limit. You now are under arrest for operating a vehicle under the influence. What did you think when you got the, the, the news that he'd been pulled over for DUI? It just made me more determined to try and figure out what was going on with him. Now skittish about driving, Nick began biking. But even that would become problematic. Nick took a bad fall and was rushed to the ER where he got this news. So they couldn't give me medication because they said I'd had alcohol in my system. When they told me I was drinking, I told them they were crazy. I, I'd been with my wife all day, I had nothing to drink. So what's happening with Nick? It's a bona fide medical mystery. Karen, certain that her husband is no alcoholic, turns to her computer for hours researching. I finally begged her, please stop. Like, there's nothing that we can do anymore. I may just have to live with this. Um, please stop. But luckily for Nick, his wife wouldn't stop. I had come across this article about auto brewing. It was like, oh my gosh, this is what he has. I'm convinced of it. An aha moment. Auto brewery, Karen learns, is when excess yeast in the intestine ferments carbohydrates and other sugary food into, get this, alcohol. We believe this is where the yeast resides. At Dr. Barbara that Cordell, that one of the alcohol. authors of the case study, had a patient like Nick who was plagued by inexplicable drunkenness. She put her patient under observation with no access to alcohol. They fed him a high carbohydrate diet and checked his blood alcohol level every two hours. The next day, his blood alcohol level went up on its own. And when they looked at the yeast in his intestines, this type of yeast that was in our patient is the same yeast that is used to brew beer. His stomach was a microbrewery. Now Karen needed to find a local Ohio doctor who would be open to the suggestion. She discovered Harvard-trained Dr. Anoop Kanodio. As for Nick's results, off the charts, four times the normal amount. It picked up the highest level of yeast I've ever seen on a patient. This is what your other doctors are missing. So we had Nick completely change his diet. We had him take out all the foods that break down to sugar. Things like breads, pasta, and rice. And guess what? After just four weeks of making simple diet changes, his strange affliction vanished. No wooziness? No intoxication? No. What that feel like for you? It was awesome. It's incredible. Um, after dealing with this for so long, I was in such major denial. But you had your guy back. Yeah, it was the Nick I fell in love with. I'm the luckiest person alive. I keep getting better and better, and I love it. I love it. As DWI defenses go, this was a new one. No one had ever heard of this condition before, and it, it was met with skepticism. In October of 2014, Joseph Maruzak's client had a blood alcohol content reading of 0.33. The attorney claimed she was far from drunk. With this condition, she had no driving impairments. You, it's like talking to you and I right now. She was as sober as a Mormon. In fact, he says his client, who was pulled over by town of Hamburg police with a flat tire, insisted she had only had four drinks over six hours. At first, they wondered if the breathalyzer reading was inaccurate. But when Maruzak got on the internet, he found another explanation. An auto brutus syndrome is an extremely rare condition that's been documented in scientific journals. Maruzak suspected his client's intestines contained so much yeast, they actually fermented carbohydrates into alcohol. These people, since they have a high blood alcohol level on a long-term basis, they may have tolerance and they may be able to function uh, relatively normally with very high blood alcohol levels where somebody else may be comatose. Gastrointestinal specialist Dr. Mohamed Fayez says he just learned about the syndrome over the past year. He suspected one of his patients could have it, but those tests came back negative. It is an extremely rare condition. Uh, there have been less than 50 cases reported worldwide. So rare, Fayez says, it's much more likely a patient is a closet drinker than actually has the condition. You have to make absolute sure uh, that somebody doesn't sneak in a little bottle of alcohol from somewhere. And uh, so the test has to be done under, under controlled circumstances in a hospital setting or a clinic setting. No one locally would do it, and I was told for insurance reasons. So what I had to do was basically set up that controlled blood draw on my own. 
Maruzak hired two registered nurses and a physician's assistant to administer the tests in a simulated clinical setting. They found her blood alcohol level did steadily rise. There was no other reasonable, logical explanation other than to conclude that at the time of my client's arrest, the elevated blood alcohol content was because of her medical condition, not from consuming alcoholic beverages. The judge agreed and dismissed the charge late last year. Until you get the facts, you don't know what you have. But at least I had a medical explanation for what it could be. And it turned out that that was accurate. Maruzak is waiting to see if the Erie County District Attorney's Office will appeal this case. In the meantime, he says his client, now on a specialized diet, wants to move on with her life. He hasn't had a drink in years, but Donato Giannato begins every day the same way. Testing his blood alcohol level. I'm curious to see you know, where it's at. The readings tell the story of an obscure disorder, auto brewery syndrome. He can get drunk just by eating bread, carrots, or any other carbohydrate. It was exactly the same. There is no difference between someone who drinks alcohol and someone who brews it. Fewer than 100 people worldwide are believed to suffer from auto brewery syndrome. Abnormal amounts of yeast in their gut convert carbohydrates into ethanol, just like a brewery. Some sufferers are arrested for drunk driving, even though they didn't drink. Giannato's nightmare began after a dinner four years ago when he felt strange. The lightheaded, started speech, you know, uh, not being coordinated. After a seizure, he was admitted to intensive care. The doctors kept asking me, does he drink? And I was puzzled. I said, no, we don't drink. The couple stumbled upon a diagnosis after a cousin, a doctor, recalled a seminar on unusual conditions. Michelle found a paper on the internet and brought it to his doctor. Nobody believed the story that he was not drinking. Giannato was monitored as he ate carbohydrates. His blood alcohol level spiked to 0.25, three times the limit, even though he did not drink. He would not show symptoms until it went a little bit higher. Giannato's case developed after antibiotics he was taking allowed yeast in his gut to grow unchecked. As Giannato's health worsened, with seizures, weight gain, diabetes, and pancreatitis. Michelle called 112 hospitals and dozens of doctors, but found neither help nor hope. Finally, their endocrinologist called a friend at Staten Island's Richmond University Medical Center. When one of my colleagues, whom I've known for 30 or 40 years, calls me and says, look, I have this very difficult case, I need your help, I'm not about to say no. Dr. Prasanna Wickramasinghe recruited infectious disease specialist Dr. Jesse Savaramutu. They were able to pinpoint the exact yeast growing in Giannato. He received antifungal medication intravenously for six weeks, plus probiotics, and began a no-carb diet. The treatment worked. It's really for things to back to normal. I mean, uh, people don't realize how bad it is until it affects you. What do you think about this video? Have you heard of this? Have you or anyone you know experienced this? Let me know in the comments below. Remember to sit high with confidence, rooted on your throne, with strength built from pain not forgotten. If you liked the video, like, subscribe, and hit that bell to receive notifications of when we upload a new video. Also, check out our merch at ezinwanyi.com.